What's going on everyone, it's Matt Pow here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be unboxing the Synology Disk Station 1522 Plus, along with the 10 gig network upgrade module and an 800 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. I was in a serious need for a storage upgrade and the external SSDs that I've been using are not going to cut it anymore. I've also noticed my laptop becoming a lot slower. I think it's because the storage system on it is all used up. So after going through some of the options out there, I went with Synology because of its software. Anyways, here we got the power brick, some screws for the 2.5 inch internal drives, two Cat5 e Ethernet cables, a set of keys to lock the drives, and the manual. And of course, the NAS itself. We also got the 800 gig M.2 SSD. This will allow me to use the M.2 slots for a storage pool. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that yet, but we'll see. Here we got the network upgrade module. The only bad part about this Synology NAS is that you have to buy this separately. I got this for about 150 bucks, but right now you can get it for 131 on Amazon. This thing will give me the fastest file transfer speeds possible. And now let's take a closer look at the NAS. So here we got the 1522 plus. So since I wanted to future proof this, I went with the five bay NAS, which is the year 2022 model. There is a 2023 model, but that's a DS923 plus, and that's only a four bay NAS. I decided to go with the 1522 plus because for only hundred bucks more, you get an extra bay and double the RAM. Here are some of the specs for the CPU. We got the AMD Ryzen R1600. So in front of the NAS, you got the power button in the bottom right, the USB on top, and then some LED indicator lights. I would honestly prefer Intel, but I guess AMD is fine for this. Honestly, I'm really hoping the fans on this are quiet. They're rated for a noise level of 22.9 decibels, so let's see. So as we take a look at the back, you can see the fans, and then on the left side is the expansion ports. On the bottom of that is the power port. To the right of that is the network upgrade module slot, which is where we'll be placing ours. And then we got the USB 3.2 port, followed by four one gigabit RJ45 ports. Here's the reset button and then the security slot. And I believe that's it for the sides of the NAS. Let's check the bottom. Here you'll find the two slots for the M.2 SSDs. So we'll be putting one of these over here. They also provide you with some easy instructions right here. All right, let's get this cracking. Over here we got the SSD, let's slide it in right here. Be careful not to drop it. I may or may not have done this already, but yes, try not to drop it in there. It was pretty much the most annoying part of this whole setup. You just gotta make sure it's right in the slot so it sticks up a little bit. And then all you gotta do is put some pressure to slide it right on in. And once it's down, there's a little knob that you twist and then it stays right in place. Get yourself a screwdriver and now let's unscrew the compartment. This is where you're going to be adding your network upgrade module. Just slide this thing right inside and screw it in. So these ended up coming in a few days later. These are the 870 EVOs by Samsung. These go for around 300 bucks and I think I got these for around 290. For now, I just went with two of these drives. I think I'll get more as I use more space and take up more space, but for now, two is enough. And to install, just start from the left side. Let's install these with the screws that they provide. First thing we do is remove this part here so that the screws can fit in. And then we take the four screws and screw it in. Let's make sure everything's lined up and that the port is sticking outwards. Hey you, hit that sub button. And now we can slide the tray into the bay. At this point you can lock it with that key if you want, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. There's no need. And finally, just repeat that however many times you need. Oh, and the reason why I went with SSDs for the main drives is so that I can future-proof the system even further. The hard drives have moving materials inside and, you know, this is just another safety precaution. And now that we got all the drives placed in, let's do all the cables. This system came with two 5E Ethernet cables. For the most part, these are fine, but I like to use Cat 6 or higher. For the main part of my house, I'm pretty much using Cat 7s. But yeah, these will work for now. Plus, Cat6 cables offer up to 10 gigabit ethernet speeds, which is definitely what we're aiming for. Alright ladies and gents, now let's move over to the computer. I'll be placing this right over here for now, 
I think I'll move it underneath my desk later when I buy a shelf for it, but for now, this will do. And once you hit that power button, let's try to find it on the computer. Right now, I got the Ethernet cable from the 10 gigabit port on the back of the NAS to my network switch that's connected to the router, while the other Ethernet cable is connected from one of the RJ45 ports directly to my laptop. In the future, I'm going to be connecting that 10 gigabit port directly to my laptop for the fastest transfer speeds, but for now, I'll do this so that we can set it up quickly. And since we're not going to be really transferring any big files right now, first thing we want to do when we get to the computer is connect to the same network. So once you do that, go to find.synology.com and hopefully you get to see your device. But if not, we're going to have to download the Synology Assistant. And to our luck, it did not work. So go to the Synology website, find your NAS, and then download Synology Assistant. Guess what guys? It did not work again. I'm not sure what's going on, but let me take a quick look at this and see what other ways we can possibly make this work. Since those first two methods didn't work, type this in and you should find it right away. This address will change once you change the name of your Synology NAS. But for now, we'll go with this. We'll also go into further detail about how to change some settings. Here's some of the device info, and now let's install the Disk Station Manager. Hit next, and then it'll prompt you that all the data on the drives will be erased. So make sure you got nothing important in them. Okay, real quick guys, I'm here to announce a new giveaway. Once this channel gets to 1,000 subscribers, I will be giving a random subscriber a $100 gift card or 100 bucks in Bitcoin, whichever you guys prefer. And this one's real easy. All you gotta do is subscribe to this YouTube channel. Tell all your friends and let them know this will be the easiest 100 bucks they could ever possibly win. And now back to the video. Let's just go through the setup process. Name your device, give it an administrator account name, and a password. Oh, and I just realized while editing this, it allows you to check mark right here on the bottom to let it be found on the web assistant, which is why we didn't find it earlier. And now we know. Let's continue on here. We can go next. Just select the recommended one. So here we got the option to make a Synology account. I think I'm going to make one and just sign in. This is so we can get all the benefits. So just sign up as you would do any other account, hit next, submit, and now you're done. And there's the list of all the benefits. Here we're setting up Quick Connect ID. This is so that in case you're not home and you wanna access all your files, you can do it from any device that has internet connection. Once you got a good name down for the ID, hit submit, and now you'll be ready for any device to connect to your NAS. We'll be downloading the mobile apps on our phone later on. This will make it much easier for me to upload some videos onto my phone in case I want to upload maybe some YouTube videos or maybe a TikTok video. Who knows? I think it's a good idea to enable this so that we get some monitoring and some protection. We got support center here. Yeah, we'll enable this too. And you got to enable the backup just in case something happens. Speaking of something happening and my internet, I think just went out. So let me, uh, activate oh okay so i guess it's appearing here now so this works too i guess oh so you know what i think happened the name change messed up with the url so now it's showing my ip address for the device instead of synology nas.local all right well anyways sign in here and here we're greeted with the same page we left off in i recommend ticking all of them and continue Ooh, okay so this is the home screen. It's giving you the option to download these now, so let's do that. But let's take a look at the URLs real quick. Here we can change the URL to POW NAS since we changed the name of the NAS itself. Here we got a couple options. So you can put in the actual IP address or you could just put the name of it itself. Here I forgot a little dash, so let's do that right now. And now this should change to the home screen. Let's see. Oh, okay, yeah, so you're gonna see this screen first since we don't have the SSL certificate for that website. But yeah, you can just proceed and just sign in. I'll just be switching over to this tab for now. All right, so we're back here and now we can download these. So install now. We'll do the extended warranty as well. All right, never mind. They're going to want me to pay a hundred bucks. Oh, you could do this if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. So we'll skip this. All right, so now we're back on the home screen. You have the option here to enable two-factor authentication. This is if you want a second level protection when signing in. Any of these options are fine. Maybe the hardware security key for a Mac so they can use your touch ID. But I feel like most people will do the approved sign in through the app. For now, we'll do this to prove sign in. Let's continue. Type in your password to verify. So now what you want to do is go to your phone and then download the secure sign in app. Scan the QR code on the app and you should be good to go. So for the purposes of the video, I'm probably just going to do the single factor authentication to make this a little quicker in case we get logged off. And now over here, we're going to set up our personal settings for the Synology NAS. 
When you put in your email, you're going to have to verify it, so get that ready. So as we continue through this, we already went through the security. Let's go to display preferences, change anything you need to. And over here, you could put in your email again so that you can send files as an attachment through the Synology apps. You should get a pop up and then you verify it through signing in. And the rest is not really necessary, but you could just go through each thing and see if you want to tick it or not. All right, now let's create the storage pool and volumes. First off, we're going to decide which type of RAID we're going to choose. So for beginners, I suggest doing the SHR. When you get more drives in your system, I would do a RAID 1 type. SHR is basically Synology's hybrid RAID. It's the automated RAID management system. This basically allows the users to create a flexible storage solution. This will optimize the capacity and its performance. For the drive type, we're going to choose the SATA SSDs. You can add a description if you want. All right, now we could choose both of these drives to add to the storage pool. And we have one drive type that's not compatible with the SATA SSDs, which is our NVMe SSD. So that's obviously not going to meet the requirements here. If we hit next, you're going to see this pop up since it's not on the compatibility list, but that's fine. We could continue on here and now over here. We can do a perform drive check in case something's wrong with our drives. You want to just double check. You never know. Over here, we're going to see the available capacity. At first, I thought this was an error because I have two drives in here of four terabytes each, which should total about eight terabytes. But now I forgot about the redundancy drive. So one drive will be used to copy the same data as a failsafe. Keep on hitting next. We could encrypt the volume, of course. And finally, before applying, you want to just double check everything's correct. You want to confirm these settings and then hit apply. And obviously, these drives will be deleted. So just make sure all the right drives are in there. Also, if you're going to continue on with the encryption process, you're going to get the key. You want to keep that in a safe place. But for my system right here, I won't be encrypting it for now, since for now, I'll just be using it to store my video editing stuff. But yeah, that's it. So just hit OK and let it do its thing. So what we're looking at here is the storage manager. We can see here the storage pool we just created with all the drives in it. On the bottom right, we can see a couple widgets for the system health and then the resource monitor. On the top right, we're going to see the notifications. And now let's set up our notifications. Here, we're going to tick this to receive notifications directly into the Synology account. We're going to have your email here. For rules, we'll just do the critical ones. And this next tab for push service, you can set it up on your phone. So on your phone, you're going to want to download the DS Finder app and then scan the QR code again. And then for the rules, we'll do warning. Obviously, this is all preference, so just choose whatever you want. And then the following tabs, you could also edit these to whatever you'd like. So from the control panel here, you could go to shared folders, which contains all the users individual home folders. The next tab is file services, which is where you can change your settings to access your folders using a computer in your local network. The next one is for user and groups. This is so you can change your user settings and group them together if you want. I'm not too familiar with this, but I think it's to add your Synology NAS to a directory service. In the connectivity section for the external access, this is so you can connect to your Synology NAS from anywhere, not just in your local network. Using Quick Connect ID is the easiest way to do this. I mean, it's not the safest of methods, but it'll do for the time being. And here's the network section. You'll be able to see which ports are being used and which aren't. And for the security section, I left most of these on its default settings. You could add that two-factor authentication here. And then of course you can enable that firewall as well. So I'd basically recommend to put up that two-factor authentication plus that firewall too. I'd enable auto block as well in case somebody tries to get in and incorrectly guess your passwords. And finally, you'll find the certificates over here. I also didn't touch this section. If you wanna use your terminal to access all your files, here's the section to do so. And then in this next section, you got the info center where you can get all the information for your NAS, followed by the login portal. This is actually where you can change the custom domain name. By default, it will be SynologyNAS.local, but here you could change it to anything and then it'll be whatever you name it, .local to access it. And then we get to the regional options to change some of these settings here for the location and then notifications, which we set up earlier. And for this next part, I didn't really change anything, so everything's still left at its default, but feel free to play around with these settings. By the way, I would suggest putting a UPS in your system too, just in case your power goes out, you got a backup. And then over here, here we got the external devices you could add a printer as well followed by the update and restore section i'd make sure you back up your files every now and then just in case something goes wrong you don't want to be that person that just loses all their files because of a simple backup error and that's about it for the settings area this is synology account application privileges and then you got the indexing service in case you're using multimedia files and lastly the task scheduler in case you have any tasks to manage all right guys finally we're done with these settings so let's look at the storage manager here you'll find all your storage volumes all your hard drives your ssds all of that stuff so what we got to do now is set up the cache for the system we'll be using the m.2 drive for this first hit the manage available drives 
And since we already created a storage pool, let's create the SSD cache. We only got one volume here, so click that. But if you have multiple, click the one you're going to be using. For now, we only got one of these SSDs over here. So we're going to be using the read only cache. Since this cache mode only stores copies of the data from the volume, there will be no data loss in case the SSD fails. So that's good. There's just one option here. So hit basic and then hit next. Select the M.2 drive that you'll be using. Hit next. Hit the max button to hit the max capacity for this drive, then hit next again. Make sure everything's in order and then hit apply. Since it's a new drive, just hit OK here. And now it's just a waiting game. All right, so I think it's done. Now let's hit settings. This is the specific settings for each drive. You could change some settings here. Let's make sure bad sector warning is ticked on. And then if you want, we can tick this on too to enable the estimated endurance notification. I'll set this to 5%. And for good measures, we'll just tick this too. And we'll set this to two months. If we scroll down here, we're going to make sure that the drive database is up to date, updated if you need to, and then hit apply. Once you're back here, hit health info, and then we can take a closer look. Here you'll find the endurance, the temperature, and the power on time. In the overview section, you can see your volume usage, your drive info, and your test schedule. And that's that. And now let's use the Mac Finder to connect our folders. Once we open up the Mac Finder, go down to network, you should find your NAS right here. So now we got to sign in, so connect as, hit connect, and now just log in with your login information. And that's that, now we could get into our folders from our Mac Finder. This is going to make my workflow so much easier. Well there you guys go, that's the beginner guide to how to set this whole Synology NAS right up. I'm really hoping this video helped you guys out. Thanks again for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and you might just win 100 bucks.